This meeting is being recorded. Hello, everybody. I am checking right now to see that the microphone is on. It is recording. It says we are supposed to be on screen share, which should be by father's power, might, and will showing up on the screen right now. I'm praying the dogs aren't going to be barking. I'm praying everybody else is going to be quiet for the recording of this because it has been a day, folks. If I sound tired in any way, shape, or form. I'm going through a lot. I am currently having kidney and liver pain and amongst other things, but you know what? Uh, his grace is sufficient for me right now. I'm going to keep moving forward with God and waiting on him. But in having and said that, today is May 17th, 2023. And I'm bringing you guys all another installment of the book of Isaiah, and it is the chapter 11 that we are on now. And as I started this with God um, yesterday, I kind of worked on a little bit of the scripture yesterday, breaking just the scripture down, not what he wanted to say. And it's funny when I do that with him and I pause and kind of go do other things. It's like, I know that he has a lot he wants to say to it and about it. And, um, and I can tell that it's going to take a whole nother day. So I broke the scripture down yesterday and then the words he wanted to put to it today, uh, he's been working on today and it is now 641 my time. Uh, 6 41 p.m and i've been working on this since about nine no maybe like 10 a.m so it's been quite a lot of just putting in what he wanted to speak about and as we started this uh as you can see right here the preface on here is that this chapter by the lead of the holy spirit took a turn toward what was finished when christ said it is finished when he was fulfilling his mission in this earth it fits perfectly, but I had zero idea he was going to take this route, but he has a desire to explain what all he accomplished being the son, the Messiah, and the waymaker in the earth and under reconciliation between wayward man and his creator. And I say all that because um, Isaiah chapter 11 is beautiful talking about um you know, the branch and the root of Jesse and, and just wonderful things about our Lord in general, right? Um, but he 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 took he wanted to take that much deeper and much further into uh where he was going with his mission in the earth. Uh, because in Isaiah, this was before our Savior had come, before the Messiah had come and lived out his life entirely on the earth, fulfilling his mission. But it is well spoken of um, in the book of Isaiah, which we have only really began to unroll about the Messiah, his mission, who he is, what his attributes are, what he's going to do, how it's going to look, etc. and so on. And so in this, um, I'm just letting you all know right now, there is a big portion on salvation in here. Um, Yes, in the in the chapter 11 of Isaiah, it is in there, but I mean, really on what he has broken down with me, and um, I'm going to be listening back as to um, all that he has taught me, because I just finished it, and it's kind of like my eyes are doing that thing where you've stared at the screen for so long that I'm like blinking and like, trying to collect everything with with not only the screen, but what he has unrolled in here and what he wants us to understand about it is finished. What does that mean? What did that mean? And what was finished? Um, so he has a lot to say in here without further ado, really, because he's pushing me to come forward because it might take quite a bit of time to unroll this. Let's begin in here on what he has to say about Isaiah chapter 11. And there shall come forth a rod or a twig and growth out of the stem or stump trunk of Jesse, which is David's father, lineage of Yeshua, Jesus's lineage, and a branch or greenness, a shoot of new, a descendant, note it's capitalized as a name is, shall grow, bear out fruit, bring forth out of his roots or bottom deepness. Our father is the root system of where we come from and root systems are the base foundational structures of where all of our design and makeup comes from, where we are fed and from whom, as well as our support and strength. The sun is the sprout that pushed through the earth, making great headway and bloomed gloriously into the vine. 
He plowed that ground, tossed things up, shifted things around, and made the way for all of us branches with leaves and healing to the nations of people to grow upon and from him, even being grafted into him upon the vine. The root system was already built, and then came the sprouting of the Lord in Yeshua the Messiah, and then the way was made through his life for us to join or rejoin the divine, self-existent, eternal God. As we can now be grafted into him and grow with him upon the vine and from the root system of the father, the tree of life. The first fruits of God are the children that notice his greatness or the roots father through the son, the twig branch and sprouting of the father. And they are the first results of the grafting process where they took or adhered properly to the gift, the Holy Spirit. These first firstlings of the Lord and the Father, Son, Godhead with their Holy Spirit are the children of the Lord that said yes to the Holy Spirit and have been allowing his hand to not only give them salvation from the penalty and sentence of their sin, but to save them in all the other ways God provided as well. We often think of the legal sentences being annihilated and expunged from our records as the sole purpose and accomplishment of Christ pertaining to salvation, but it couldn't be further from the truth. He did so much more than just fixing or adjusting our records and sentences. He gave himself to us to join to, and in that we joined the Father again and received the Holy Spirit as the gift unto us to accomplish this reunion. Things accomplished when Christ walked the earth during his mission and fulfillment of. Number one, he came to show us the way, even as a child, that we are to be separated unto the Father about his business, learning the scriptures and enjoying ourselves and, and enjoining ourselves to him, dedication, consecration to the Father God. Even at number two, even as a child teen, he proved again and again that the father was with him and approved of him even before his anointing in that he was showing and teaching the wisdom of God and understanding and counsel of God with knowledge, even before his formal baptism and anointing later in life, as he taught in the places of worship where the doctors of the law frequented, and he made a lasting impression on them, good or bad, depending on the rabbi or the priest. And I'm going to change this word here, folks. I don't normally do this while we're on screen, but I'm going to do that since it's completely the wrong spelling of where. He did all of that without being anointed officially in baptism yet, and he did it by the presence of the Lord being with him and the fear of the Lord, the Father, in him and upon him. He taught and he exampled the relationship with God the Father from the very beginning of his walk upon and in the earth realm with our Father. He had the strength and fortitude of the Father from the get-go to do all this and not turn back from the way. He had the seven spirits of God with him the entire time, even before his official baptismal anointing and ceremonial approval of his sonship, the presence of the Lord, the counsel, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the might, and the fear of the Lord. Number three, he studied to show himself approved. And he tells us now we are to do the same, for he is the example son of whom all sons are to follow. When scripture says to follow me, he isn't saying literally on a road from one town to another in this earth, though he does go everywhere with us. He's saying, follow the spirit of God in you. That is me and the father leading you just as he led me. And we will lead you in the paths of righteousness and the way to go. We will mature you, refine you, raise you, protect you, lead you and reveal ourselves to you through our Holy Spirit. And one of the ways in which God's spirit led Christ, even growing up, was through his studies of the word of God, the holy scriptures. Because the father, his ways, his person and conduct, his lead and his plans, desires and designs, his laws and statutes of how he conducts his kingdom and his nature and traits are all in there. Yeshua was asked to know his God and the word of God is how we do that. We are called to walk the same path, to study the word of God and to know our God by doing so. And no one will be responsible for whether we do that or not, just ourselves. We are to study to show ourselves approved. When we cross over and see him face to face, we are responsible for what we picked up in our relationship with him in this life, with the time he gave to us. 
And we are to learn from Yeshua, the son, ex the example son, the one who came to show us the way. And we are to follow his path that he plowed with the gift he left us, his Holy Spirit, shed abroad to those who will accept him. And as he spilled his blood and his body was broken for us to do so. Number four, he was baptized which is officially dedicated and consecrated under the one God, the father of all creation, and is our example that we are to do the same, being born of water and of spirit fire, as well as baptized by water and of spirit fire in our new regenerative man. Number five, after God was able to bond with him, become one with him in his inner man, able to lead him to study the word of God and intake it all into his person and integrate with the word of God, living that truth within him, he was led to start collecting human students to follow him and his ways and the word of truth. We are called to follow him in this and make disciples of the nations of people too. We are called to not only show ourselves approved, learned, anointed, separated, consecrated, and sanctified with God, but then to start teaching the children, the other children of God, making students of the Lord and the study as God has led us. We do this like Paul did when he said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And I just wanted to note here that as I said that, he goes, hey, you know how people are always seeing one, 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 four ones? Let them note that I am talking about be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Um, well, he's told me before that four ones is one, 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 three of them is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, plus one more makes you. So that's complete unity. The number one is unity. So this is like full unity of everyone becoming one. And if you're followers of Paul, meaning the way that Paul walked his life with God, because he's following Christ and Christ followed the Father, then we have the total unity of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, plus one more equals four ones equals plus you, all in unity. So I'm breaking that down for anybody who sees one, 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 one all the time. We are called like Yeshua was called of the Spirit and the Father to help lead the others in the way. And Yeshua is continually saving the Father's children, even yet, in and by all these things we are listing out. How to. Dedicate your life unto God, be separate, study to show yourselves approved in and with God and the word of God in union with God, being dedicated unto God and consecrated to him in baptism of water and of fire in learning how to follow, submit to God and get sanctified and cleaned up, straightened up, and then collect the others of God's kids to lead them in the same paths of righteousness. In all these ways, and even more, is the salvation of the Lord, in that we are saved from estrangement and saved from defilements, and saved from being unaligned with him and misshapen, and saved from entanglements from the enemy and his counsels as we become students of the Lord God, which is really children of God who are allowing God to reform them from former offenders who are now adopted into the kingdom and being influenced by the king and the kingdom ways of righteousness as our person changes and we live out the new creation in and with Christ, which is why he came, carried our sin sentences and died and rose again to become the way we reconnect with God, made available to all who wills to live out with live out life with God forevermore. Number six, he delivered people of lies, entanglements with the enemy of our souls, which is Satan, and he healed and restored people. Physically, sure, yes, but also internally, moreover, again and again. The Lord is constantly delivering us in one fashion or another all the time. He is delivering us from lies. He is delivering us from false identities. He is delivering us from ill mindsets and beliefs. He is delivering us from physical ailments. He is delivering us from demonic entities housed within the flesh and souls of men. He's delivering us from loneliness by enjoining us and never leaving our sides. He's delivering us from bondages of all kinds, and he's with us through it all when we must endure them, and he doesn't take them from us immediately unto his own purposes. Luke 22, 31 through 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fails not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Sometimes we will have to go through things we have 
but we have an advocate advocating for us in intercessions the whole time. Note, he said, Satan desires to have you, which means he wasn't going to stop that from happening. And there are reasons why. He said he will sift you or refine you. I keep telling folks Satan has a job God uses him for. It's called refinements and judgments. And when God has found a satanic place within us that needs eradication, that's when we're going to find Satan sifting and refining us because we've actually opened the door, folks. He didn't stop it. He said, I will pray for you that your faith does not fail you. That's our trust in God through all things and for his purposes, even when it doesn't seem to make sense. And then he said, after you have been converted, that means there was a change that needed to take place in Peter, humbling, reformation, changing. And after that conversion takes place, go and strengthen your brethren. Was he not strengthening his brethren before this? Was he not compassionate? Was he hard hearted? What and in what ways needed refinements in Peter? We will all have to go through conversions within and God will intercede for us all as he puts us through what he wills. He's constantly delivering us from one thing or another, even in having to endure hardships that are working a work within us in that we will share in his afflictions or better known as the process he had to endure. He is delivering us from unbelief, doubt, weakness, weakness that is seen as being powerful, meaning with him, we can get through anything as he is our strength, provision, sustaining power and love behind us. We are far more sturdy than what we believe of ourselves to be. We give up on ourselves and God far too easily in this material life. Sure, it's hard and we must endure a lot. But in that we become stronger, see, see that we can go further and throw down lies that the winds and waves are stronger than the hand and heart of God in our lives. And then we come to understand that we have everything we need in the presence of God with us. We learn that God is delivering our inner man all the time in one way or another. We learn that God is out to save the spirit and souls of men and women before he is ultimately concerned with easing everyone in the flesh or carnal suits. Why? Because God knows it's the carnal flesh suit that will go into the dirt and return to dust. But the inner guts of the man's essence, his soul and his spirit, whether dead of Satan or revived of God with God, will be what endures forever in one place with God or another, estranged, cast out from God, separated forever, hell and then the lake of fire. We must understand he is on a mission, and that mission is to save the souls of men and women by giving them himself, the spirit of life, and reviving their dead status of spirit within them. Because reviving that dead spirit into a living one with and by the spirit of God will give them the opportunity to reform in their souls, which will come into alignment with the holy living God and save their thoughts, emotions, and decision-making parts of themselves. And thereby Satan and his operations are thrown down within and God wins over another part of the souls of men, delivering them from the demonic strongholds, lies, hopelessness, and the counsel and knowledge of Satan. God is always delivering us, and this is a part of the gift of salvation that was given abroad to all those who will partner with him, yoke to him, marry him, and allow him to be their God, reformer, deliverer, and master over them. Lord. Salvation is so much more than just legal sentences being done away with pertaining to sin. Salvation of God unto us is union every day with him. He is salvation, and we yoking to him is the gift. People often want to say about the time on the cross when Christ said it is finished, that somehow that is pertaining to salvation of the legality of sin being done. But that was only a part of what Christ was implying. Sure, the finished work of taking upon himself our legal sentences was finished, but more than that, he was implying. He was implying his full work of coming and doing all the things that I am listing out here in this numbered list of what he partook in, walked out and accomplished with his whole physical life, walked with and walked with the father is finished. And then he could now release his spirit back to the father as he accomplished all he was supposed to. And all he was supposed to accomplish was much more than only the legal sentences to be abolished and expunged from our records. It was the fullness of his physical life's mission that was finished. 
meaning he did it all as father asked him to walk out, not just the legal penalties being taken care of, which would be on the cross, the whipping and etc. The whole exampling, he was to walk out to humans, to sons of God, to show them the way. And, you know, he walked perfectly in his life, which, which by the time he was beaten and bruised and broken for us is why he was able to make the way. So when he says it is finished, buddy, we better understand. He means that whole walking out process of not failing at that when I was tempted in all ways as the average man is tempted, right? So we have to understand it's way more than just paying the legal debt. It's how and what did that his whole entire walk perfectly with God that he was exampling to us as he's showing us the way. Number seven, he carried the burdens of others and we are to learn to do this too. He said each man is to carry his own invoice task or service, essentially his lot in life. But he said, we are to carry each other's burdens, which is intercessory prayer and helping how and with what the Lord leads us to. The Strong's has burden used in Galatians 6, 2 as G922, load or weights or issues in life. But in Galatians 6, 5, just a few verses down, the word for burden is G5413, which is invoice or service, meaning God has something he has written and tagged to our very lives that we ourselves will be responsible for carrying out. Each man will be responsible for his own life and or lot God has bestowed upon him, but we are to help them carry their burdens, all they need assistance with, and to reach out to Father and pray him about them. But each man will be responsible for walking out his own life and joining to the Father through the Spirit of God to walk the lot in life that was written and handed him. He will be responsible, we will be responsible for our own lives and walking them with God, the load. But sharing and carrying others' burdens is the job of the body of Christ as Christ's person carried the very same upon this earth. It's called ministering to God and to man. Number eight. He showed us to forgive. And in that, he said, if you are faithful to dismiss charges against others, which is forgiveness and mercy, for they know not what they do, your father in heaven will be faithful to forgive you of your charges of ill and evil sin. But if we will not forgive, our heavenly father will not forgive us. Yeshua walked out the exemplified life of God the Father in a human suit form as child of God and spoke the words and lived the conduct of the Holy Father. We are to do the same, and in that, we are saved from many demonic traps and snares in this life. God, in the life of the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, walked out how to do life in this earth whilst partnering with the Holy Father and the Spirit. Part of salvation is gaining that way to live united to the Father again. It's the purpose of forgiving our legal penalties for the legal offenses against God, which led to estrangement and had to be dealt with to regain the relationship. Salvation and the sentences of sin guiltiness being abolished is only the gateway into reconciliations to the holy living God once again. We have so much more he gave us, namely himself. We gained him back into our lives and not just back, but yoked to as one where no one can ever take him from us again. We are the only ones who can say no to him now. I pray we say yes to him in all the ways he needs us to. Number nine. He showed us mercy and truth. He lived the truth of his identity and the father's identity for he came out of from him and he walked in mercy. We too are called to walk in the truth. That's the scriptures and the spirit of the living God as he is and finds his being. And we are called to walk mercifully through this life, forgiving others and helping them, assisting them and uplifting them above even our own selves and lives. For this is what the son exemplified. He showed us the way to live sacrificial lives, which means lives that are spent on others, namely God first and then the body brethren and not on selves and what we can enjoy and partake in here for ourselves. He exemplified the giving up life and lifetime unto the father. And we are to do the same as he walked out and showed us the way. This place is a mission field. We are sowing into it, ministering under the needs of God in this place, taking God's will from heaven and injecting it here in the earth through the sacrificial laid down life where man in flesh partners with God in spirit. And we move and change this earth and the people in it by his will being established. 
We are called to give up our lives here in the 80 or so years we are given upon this dirt earth and give it to him to live out of us as he wills and, and reach his children with all the deliverance and justifications he needs to bring to them, which means uprighting and molding. Number 10. He couldn't have exemplified how we are saved from selfishness, self-centeredness, and the pride of life any better than how he walked with the Father. He showed us salvation from the pride of life is gained in humbly living with God and living sacrificially, giving up all we could pursue in this life that would lead us down paths that would not fulfill the mission field needs here in this earth if we get caught up in self-gratifications. He exemplified the laid down life to us all. And in that we gain salvation from pride, humility and sacrifice God's way and living in obedience to him and preferring others over self and self fulfillments leads to salvation of pride and self focus and self focus is the sin of Satan. And it is the display of being a self God and rejecting having the real God over us self being the most important one in a person's life over giving to others first from our finances, hearts, time, sweat, and efforts is what Satan does and is being God in one's own life. It is where one has become the number one honcho in our lives. And that role is made for one and only one God holy. Yeshua demonstrated how to throw Satan down within and how to erect God holy into his rightful position. And that is part of salvation, saving us inside from the pride of life, which came from the tree of the knowledge of how to be satanic, that the fallen one sowed into us when we took and ate his fruit. Yeshua was the best example of how to throw Satan down and out from within all the thoughts and temptations to follow his ways. And we are to learn to do the same. And in that, we are saved daily, hourly, and from situation to situation in our lives. Number 11, he exampled how he died to sin, was buried in that old suit and was raised again, anew and in and with God holy and by his spirit. We too are to learn from this with God and join in what Yeshua exemplified when he took the hand of the almighty to be dead to sinning and reborn in the new image completely as he was raised uncorrupted from the grave. And then he walked out the new creation and undo his students for 40 days after the resurrection of his new image and creation. We too are called as well to walk out the relationship resurrected with and by God in the newness of life and lead others into this as well. He schooled his students in and from this regenerated of life and we are called to do the same. He showed us the way over and over again, one incident, situation, place and person again and again. We too are called to live and walk with the Father and the Son through the Spirit and exemplify the heavenly family relationship in the earth, just as Yeshua did. Father and Son and their Holy Spirit now have us to show themselves to the world through. We have to come into oneness with him in order to allow them to do that. And in that, we are agreeing for them to remake us entirely. So they themselves can do through us what Father did through Yeshua. The two became one living entity in harmony together. The new creation of oneness was exemplified and shown out perfectly in the life of the son to help all of God's other sons how to do the walk with the Father and his spirit through the life of the son as well. So. When we hear that it is finished, it is much more than only about our legal sentencing of sin being done away with. When we accept the relationship of reconciliation with and to the Father, our Creator again, it is about the Son's entire mission having been fulfilled. It is finished means all I came to do, I have finished. And folks, a legal penalty being expunged when we when we take to living life yoked to the Holy Creator again is only one way we are saved by him. We are saved over and over again daily by him himself. He himself is the gift that keeps on giving. He himself is the treasure. He himself and being able to be yoked to him again is the real accomplishment of Calvary and the whipping, scourging, bruised, crushed brokenness he endured for us. 
the legal sentence we had over us with sin is just the legalities being dealt with. The rest of being saved is multifaceted and it has to do with walking life with him in the reunion or reyoking and partnering with him. That is true salvation, being reunited quite literally to the holy living God again. Legalities are just that. We are saved by being connected to him again. And one thing he accomplished in his mission was to do the old covenant fully, perfectly, to open the door to us again, to reconnect with him, and all hindrances removed by taking care of the legalities. But the gift is not the removal of the legalities. That is the means by which we reconnect. The gift is him. Salvation always has been God and being able to rejoin him. Again, it was accomplished by the life of the son. And the life of the son is so much more than one facet of what he accomplished in the earth by removing the legal sentences. The life of the son was exemplary. Definition exemplary. Serving as a desirable model, representing the best of its kind. Root definition, sample and imitation. Salvation is union to a person again. The way to that was the accomplishments of the son in his life here as he exemplified the way to do life with the father. And the legalities that opened the door to the way back to the father was taken care of by the life of the son as he rocked out the old marriage covenant to the father flawlessly in his walk with God and paved the way for us to do so now by giving us his spirit to live with making all things possible. And he cleared the legal debt in doing that. Now, all who yoke to him have a cleared legal debt too. But salvation is more than the legal debts being paid. It's rejoining him in life and being yoked to him forevermore as he leads, guides, reforms, commands, corrects, walks with us in our lives, forevermore delivering us from lies, devils, brokenness, loneliness, separation of estrangement, ill-thinking, overwhelmed emotions, bad decision-making, being a self-god in pride of life. He saves us from following Satan, breaking down Satan's strongholds, logic, counsel, and leading in our lives, and to bring us into life and life more abundantly with him in his tree. Did you know the brain has two hemispheres that look like a tree with connecting synapses and neurons like roots and paths of feeding? And did you know the hearts of men are made in two hemispheres or chambers too, resembling a tree with its veins and root systems as well? So we need to get into the right trees inside our minds and hearts because it's either Satan's tree and knowledge operating in there, which is the death of us, or it's God's tree of life operating in our hearts and minds. The choice is ours. The legalities just paved the way to life with him and being joined and engrafted into him the vine branch sprouting of the father, the root system. And in that we are the first fruit branches or offshoots of him. Salvation is being joined, grafted into him and his tree of life at the same time being uprooted from Satan's tree and counsels and lead in our lives. He is salvation. The removal of the guilty sentences were only a portion of true salvation. It's just what he did to pave the way to life with God being rejoined to him. So it is finished, has opened up the doorway of the possibility of being rejoined to him. And he did say in Revelation 3, 20 through 21, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also have overcame and am set down with the father in his throne. The doorway was provided. The son is the door, scripture says, but we have to open up to him inside our hearts and minds for him to come in and sup with us. That's live life with us and do all he and his spirit is sent to do and help us with. The legalities of sin were blown away by Yeshua and how he lived with the father. Now the rest of taking his hand in marriage is up to us, each of us. But if we will do that and allow him in, having paid our penalties and shown us the example way to live life with the Father, and we say yes to all of that, we will then endure to the end of this lifetime here with him, and he will seat us in his throne room with him as he is seated with our Father there. Legal penalties being eradicated is only one way in which God has saved us and continues to save us, which again means make us complete in him, delivering us unto himself, which is the definition of salvation. G, 4991 and 4992, salvation. Definition, feminine 
of G4990, which means rescue or safety, physically or morally, defense. King James usage is salvation, be saved, deliver, health, and saving. And all of these are, are under the definition of what salvation is. Isaiah 11 continued. And the spirit or wind, breath, exhalation, rational being and expression of the Lord, the self-existent eternal one, shall rest or settle down upon, dwell, stay, remain upon him. The spirit or wind, breath, exhalation, rational being and expression of wisdom, which is good sense, skillful and wise, and understanding, which is knowledge, meaning full understanding. The spirit or wind, breath, rational being and expression of counsel. Advice, planning, prudence, cautiousness, and judgment, counsel, and purpose, and might, force, valor, victory, mastery. The spirit, breath, wind of rational being and expression of knowledge, cunning, knowing, and of the fear, moral reverence of the Lord or self-existent eternal one. So let me read that to us again without all the definitions. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Note the son as he is the branch vine of the roots of the father carries the fullness of the seven spirits of God within himself and upon himself as the spirit of God rests, remains and dwells with him. Verse three, and shall make him of quick understanding or blow upon, breathe upon, smell, perceive of immediate understanding in the fear or moral reverence of the Lord, the self-existent eternal one. And he shall not judge or pronounce sentence for or against after the sight or appearances, the act of seeing through his vision of his eyes of his outward appearance, neither reprove or argue right, decide or convict, chasten or correct after the hearing or report of his ears or show or telling of hearing. Here we are seeing, even in the Old Testament, that when the sun will come, as not happened yet here in Scripture, here on the earth, walking his life out with God the Father, he will be walking as the Father finds his being. He will not walk according to only what we can see down here, factually, with eyes and ears of dirt suits. But he will be walking by faith in the invisible spirit of God, judging according to what the spirit is saying and showing. Again, this is one thing the son accomplished when he said he finished his mission here was to teach men and women to live by faith in the spirit's leading and not by what we perceive with human dirt suit eyes and ears of this material realm, but as the spirit directs. Verse four. But with righteousness or moral and legal right, prosperity and justice, he shall judge the poor or those who are dangling thinly, weakly and needy and reprove or correct and chasten, chasten with equity, which is a level plane, balance, straightness, and justice for the meek or depressed in mind, gentle or of needy circumstances, humble and lowly of the earth. And he shall smite or strike severely, wound and punish the earth with the rod or branch off the root system, which is the father, God, ruling scepter of his mouth, Blowing speech, command sentence, and with the breath, wind exhalation, rational being and expression of his lips, language speech, shall he slay, put to death or destruction the wicked, morally wrong, bad persons, guilty and condemned. And righteousness or moral and legal right, prosperity and justice shall be the girdle or belt of his loins on the small of his back slash waist and faithfulness or firmness and security of moral fidelity, stability and verity, the girdle or belt band of his reins, which is the seat of his vigor and strength. Note reins, like what steer a horse and turn it about, is the same root spelling of rain, like when God is reigning most high within a man, and he is able to steer that man about. It is righteousness that is wrapped around his center, stability, structure, area of his person, his waist. And faithfulness, the ability to flow through, on, follow through on what he said he would do, his is his reins or steering him about. So right living with, and like the father is wrapped all around his person, giving him the stability to his person and structure and faithfulness or the ability to successfully follow through on everything he gives himself to is his security and stability of his girdle or bridle of his reins, which is the seat of his vigor and strength. 
So ought we be walking in his righteous ways as well, which is being morally and spiritually and legally right, walking in justice too? And ought we also be walking in faithfulness, being what we, we say we back up and live, not hypocrites saying one thing, but living another and excusing ourselves in conduct? For he did say in faithfulness or fidelity is found our firmness and security of moral fidelity, stability, and verity of our persons. And the girdle of his reins, or bridle steering him, which is reins like a horse's steering, is his seat of his vigor and strength. That's being yoked to the Father, guiding him as he's steered about by him. Ought we not walk with our bridles on and our person be turned about by the holy living God's spirit, and we too then find our, in, ourselves in vigor and strength of that union, having him as our Lord too, like Yeshua had the Father leading him in all his ways? We have much to learn of what saves us in this life by examining the life of the Son. Definition examine. Inspect someone or something in detail to determine their nature or condition. Investigate thoroughly a formal witness in court. Root definition. Weigh or test. If we walk as sons, we will walk as the Son walked with the Father, not flawlessly like he did, but with deliberate effort, same as he did. For in doing so, we walk with all the deliverance, saving benefits that the Son walked in and provides to us now. I'm being united to the Father once again. Salvation is full, and it's much more than legal sentencing. He's a person, and his person saves us. Verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid or young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. And they shall not hurt, spoil, break, afflict, or harm, or deal ill with, nor destroy, ruin, or waste in all my holy, sanctified, and consecrated mountain, promoted hill, and high place. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as like the waters cover the sea. When God holy is present and his kingdom is being upheld, peace in and on earth and all places he finds his being is righted and chaos and evil is abolished. Where he is promoted in the high place, think within man too, his kingdom, rule and reign is upheld and puts everything in order or shalom. And this is done by gaining and being filled with the knowledge of God. That's who he really is. His identity, his attributes, nature, conduct, personality, statutes, and precedents he lives by, his kingdom, and how it's run. When we perish, we perish for lack of knowledge, and that knowledge and understanding is of God and the operations of God. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you shall be no priest to me. Seeing you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. When we forget the law of God, we are essentially forgetting God, his person, conduct of character, and how he operates his person, nature, attributes, precepts, and statutes, how he and his kingdom operate. So we are saved when we know how he operates, who his person is, and we allow him to teach us and reform us and bring us into all truth, like his spirit is to do. We perish if we refuse him in all those ways and we are in speech only proclaiming to walk like life out with him but in truth of actions are hypocritical and are not doers of life with him and i'm going to correct this i know there's other spelling mistakes in here but they are minor compared to like and life are two completely different words please excuse me He's not asking for perfection in our walk with him, but walking clean before him, meaning bearing it all to him, all the ugly bits and holding nothing back before him, honest and genuine as he assists us in walking this relationship out with him. In our weaknesses, he can show himself strong in us to reform us, strengthen us, get us through things we thought he couldn't. He was required to walk flawlessly in his mission or the life lot he was given to walk out. We are not called to perfectly walk out the old covenant. We are called to genuinely and honestly walk out life with him in relationship, putting effort in unto the new covenant because the legal penalties were now taken care of by him. And so was the exemplified walk of how we are to live when the son came and demonstrated it all, showing every son how to walk with God the father. 
We are called to walk in efforted relationship with God, to be as he is to the best of our ability with his strength and spirit helping us to do that in the earth, thereby walking out the reformation and sanctification process of yoking with the almighty and holy spiritual matrimony, where two become one entity forevermore joined. The knowledge of the Lord is incredibly important, and the only way you achieve that is by living in the scriptures, and then living the scriptures out, becoming living Bibles, living epistles, living love letters of the relationship between man and his God in our own lives. And he leads us and yokes to us and reforms us into his new creation. We learn the knowledge of him. I call it carnal knowledge of him, meaning, quote, in the material in the carnal life you gave to me, I am learning you, sir. I am learning you through all the time we spend in you where you are the written word of God and all the time I spend with communion with you literally in spirit as the rhema or spoken word of God to me. But in all ways you are revealing yourself to me, which is gaining the knowledge of God and in that I perish not, end quote. Verse 10, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand, be established, presented for an ensign or flag and sail, banner and standard of the people. To it shall the Gentiles or massing nations of people seek or tread and frequent unto, follow, pursue, ask about and worship, diligently inquire of. And his rest or peaceful consoling, especially in matrimony, abiding comfortably at ease and still shall be glorious, weighty and in copious splendor and honor. Not only is the sun the branch sprouting of the Lord, our vine we attach to, coming to him and through him to connect us to our root system in the Father again, but he is our standard, meaning our kingdom representative and our example. And we are called to seek the Lord, our Father, the Creator, as like he did. And seek defined is tread and frequent unto, follow, pursue, ask about, and worship, diligently inquire of him, our Father, through the sun, the doorway, entrance, and their Holy Spirit the means of how. And in doing that, we gain rest in him, which defined means he brings us into peaceful consolation, especially in matrimony. And it literally says that in the Strong's folks. Abiding comfortably with him at ease and still or quieted within. And in that, he said, his rest shall be glorious, which means filled with weighty copious. And that means a lot of splendor and honor. He is saving us over and over again in so many, so very many ways. He's instructing and fathering us in the way to go, and it's huge in our relationship with him. So he can save us from the pride of life and the counsel lead and entrapments of his enemy, Satan, in our lives. So much more than just the legal penalty of sin being paid that opened the door to the more than that he can now do in our lives. And the more than is fathering us. Raising us, maturing us, reforming us, strengthening us, leading us in what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, and unto which people, also in where to go, when to go, what to say and fulfill, as he leads us in it all, and we face off with the spirit of this world. Salvation is coming through life with us to defeat his enemy, the adversary of our souls, and to throw down Satan and his kingdom and rule in our lives and in the lives of those in the earth. Legal sin penalties being forgiven and dismissed open the door of possibilities to the more than with us. I am so grateful to him for the more than with us, for his desire to walk out so much more than just what he exemplified to us. He desires to start there, yes, but to desire to take us beyond and into the more than. This is where he gets to be the lion of Judah in our lives to us and against our enemies. He came as the lamb and the lamb paid the legal debt. But the lion of Judah will walk out with us the defeat of our enemies in life where he crushes Satan under our feet. That is accomplished in the relationship and upholding of the kingdom. Salvation is a person and when he is yoked to and a holy union is upheld in our lives, we win and crush Satan, which means all his operations and antics and plans and warfare in our lives. Salvation is being yoked to the holy living God again and he himself upholding his kingdom within, which is where it resides down here with man inside. And we carry his will from within into the world and we transform the world with him ruling and leading and commanding straight through us. But that work begins in the hearts, minds, and wills of men and women. The souls of men and women is where the battleground is. And the son showed us the way to win against his enemy. We must follow. We must now follow his lead and his ways and yoke up with our father too and beat his enemy and gain salvation in all ways he has provided to us. 
verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand or power, dominion, labor, and strength again the second time to recover or erect, procure, especially by purchase, own, teach, keep, possess, and redeem the remnant or remainder residue of his people, which shall be left or remain from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros, which is an Egyptian city, and from Cush, which is Ethiopia, and from Elam and from Shinar, which is Babylon, and from Hamath, Assyria, and from the islands of the sea. Can we see that he's trying to save a bunch of people that have been, that been living in, a, in cultures where a whole bunch of, of hedonistic and idolatrous um, spirit, spiritual adultery was taking place? All these are captive areas. Babylon, Egypt, Syria. I mean, and he's trying to recover or or re-erect, procure, which means pull into safety, purchase, own, teach, keep, possess, and redeem this small amount of people by his hand of power, dominion, and labor, and strength. And folks, we only get that when we yoke to him. That's it. He is attempting to recover a remnant of people, a spiritual people that desire to choose him, yoking to him, and being like him and one with him. Those who will come out of bondage or yoke union to his enemy, opposition, and the adversary of our souls. He has set his hand or his power, dominion, labor, and strength toward helping us to assist us in all ways and manners to accomplish this. But we must be willing and say yes to him in this process of partnership, union. That is salvation. Verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign, flag and banner, like for a kingdom, for the nations, masses of people, and shall assemble, gather, receive, store the outcasts, or the pushed down and overthrown of Israel, and gather together to the dispersed, scattered of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Note, he is attempting to recover people from all over in every place and nation who will come to him. The outcasts are those who are set apart and rejected of the spirit of this world because they are not of this world, but from a foreign kingdom and a foreign king that is not of like from this world, its cultures or ways or paths. Note as well, he speaks of the tribe of Judah, the lion's tribe, and those who will yoke to the lamb will partake in the conquering of this earth or dirt selves with the lion. We must come to the lamb, follow his lead first, lay down a sacrificial life, becoming living sacrifices upon his altar, humbled and reformed before him, dying as Christ died to self and self pursuits, lived unto the father and was raised into an incorruptible form, not taking not talking of his physical body only, but his inner person, and walked out the new creation. We must come to the lamb and follow him first and bow to the father in the same ways. Then the lion comes to us to walk life out with him, crushing Satan under our feet in all the way, in all he walks out with us. Lamb first, symbolically, that is us laying down our lives and being reformed and led of the father and the Holy Spirit. And then lions who will lead with Christ at the helm, crushing his enemy under their feet as two have now become one entity in whole alignment and harmony, a powerful force to reckon with. Verse 13, the envy or jealousy also of Ephraim shall depart, be turned off, decline, be undone, removed, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex, cramp, afflict, besiege, distress, or oppress Ephraim. Note, the adversaries of Judah, the lion, shall be cut off. That's when God of holiness has high reign and his kingdom is established, which is what the son came to fulfill. The kingdom in man who is called to steward manage the earth with God. It is not our earth, for God owns the earth, the scripture states, and the fullness of it, which means all that it has in it, humans, animals, entities, plants, all of it. But when he is erected inside, the Lord, the son, and the father with their Holy Spirit, the lion of Judah, reigns. And shalom, peace, godly order is restored. Verse 14. But they shall fly, shine forth upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil, plunder, take for prey, them of the east together, united. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey, like royal court be subject to them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy, seclude, and ban bluntly, utterly slay, destroy the tongue or cove of water of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind, breath, violent exhalation of life and rational being and expression of, shall he shake, vibrate and rock to and fro like sawing, sift and strike. His hand, power, dominion, strength of labor, 
over the river Euphrates and shall smite it in the seven, cardinal number meaning full one, a number of completion, streams, and make men go over dry shod or with dry shoes. This is exemplifying the might, power, and dominion of the lion being laid down, the king in the earth realm, and unto upholding those who uphold covenant with him. With ease he will subdue and take dominion unto and subject his enemy to bow to him, and will overcome them as he walks out his children with ease from their grips and oppression on dry, easily traversed paths, dry shod ground. This is what God does inside man when laying down his kingdom within and subduing Satan and all his garbage kingdom counsel and oppression. When the lion shows up after we accept God's lamb and yoke to him in marriage. Verse 16, and there shall be a highway, thoroughfare, turnpike, st turnpike, staircase, and path for the remnant or remainder of his people who shall be left from Assyria, that's bondage, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up, was recovered out of the land of Egypt. Those who will be saved are those who have chosen the highway of holiness to walk with God, not perfection, but serious efforts to yoke up with him, come into agreement with his person, his ways, conduct, nature, and attributes of his person, for we came from him and must return to his image. He is saying, I have come for the small group of people who are willing and desirous to truly return to me, my ways and my lead in their lives, who will allow me to reform them, lead them, counsel them, who trust me and endure all I erect in their lives to endure, because afterwards to those who will endure, they shall be saved. But we have to come out of Egypt for that to happen. We have to come out of bondage, which is marriage to Satan, and we have to marry God, which is where two become one aligned entity where we live unto him, his way, and by his lead as our Lord and Savior, our God, and not unto our own desires any, long, any longer, but giving him a life for a life, where he can come in and reform us and create within us the new creation in and with Christ. We need to step into all that salvation handed us, and it's much more than the legalities being dealt with. It's hand in hand, uniting to him in spiritual marriage. And in spiritual marriage to him, we are faithful in fidelity and no longer adulterous and living with Satan and his spirit at the same time as God holy, which means we will no longer walk, folks, that's lukewarm too, by the way, which means we will no longer walk the ways of the world by the lead of the spirit of this world, the prince of the power of the air down here. And if winds and the current of them is called spirit, and the Lord said so when he defined his spirit as being the current of his that flows unto us in the strongs of scripture, then we need to ditch the winds of counsel and the cultural ways of walking that Satan down here is blowing our way all the time and yoke only up to the current and winds of God holy, his spirit. Spirit, G4151, Numa, a current of air that is breath or a blast or a breeze, the rational soul by implication, vital principle, mental disposition, etc., or superhuman, an angel, demon, or divine God, Christ spirit, the Holy Spirit. So it can be any of these winds. Spirit means that. So which one? Are we doing the, the demonic and the fallen or the divine? Which spirit's leading us? Our Lord is attempting to save us from the air waves of the enemy and the winds that blow from him and all his bark and bring us back into union with the Holy Spirit of God, his winds, teachings, leadings, counsel, and knowledge, and bring us back into alignment with him in partnership to uphold his kingdom within us. We have to choose to partner with God and to uncouple from Satan and his leadings down here that echo loudly like the winds and waves where Peter sank. It was taking the hand of the Almighty and coming into union with him again that saved him. We need to remember that is what salvation is. It's taking the hand of the Almighty again and being in union with him under his lead, authority, and power that saves us. Salvation is a person and so much more than the legal debt being paid. It's coming into a solid relationship with him again, where he demolishes the adversary in our lives. He is salvation and he is the gift given us at Calvary. And what he accomplished, what he finished, what his mission and what was his mission. And his mission was to reconnect humanity with the creator, the father again. And he did that by exemplifying the walk with the father in life. And he raised up father's children, showing us we are to disciple or discipline, train them too. And he finished the only sacrifice that was necessary for everyone's legal penalties owed in a debt by laying his life down upon the altar and being slain as the lamb. 
We too are to lay our lives down and die too, worldly, selfish, self God living too, and give a life back to him in exchange for a life he gave to us. He has a life for us, but we have to lay the one down, selfish one, our way to pick up the next one, the one that is resurrected from death and made anew in him and with him. And in picking up all that his salvation provided after the penalties were abolished for sin, he finishes the good work he has started in us. He started a good work in the garden. Then it went all pear-shaped and awry. He is attempting to finish that workmanship of a father raising his babies, his children, his offspring. Now, those offsprings of the vine, us, the branches that spring forth from him and being grafted into him as the way to reconciliations with him has been made. Now, all that is left is to walk out that life with him as the father raises us children up in his ways once again. But we have to agree, submit, and take his hand to do that. Salvation is truly coming out of being alone and estranged from God, our creator and father, and stepping into life, which is reunification, reyoking to, remarrying, and rejoining him again. Death is estrangement and walls and separations from God. Life is reunion, rejoining, reconciling in relationship, and retaking the hand in union to God again, relationally. So salvation was made possible by the life of the son and the legalities were dealt with and the way was made. But rejoining father or creator is what salvation is. And he's a person who exemplified a walk with the father and yoking to the two of them through their Holy Spirit is how we are saved. He didn't do this life here in sacrifice unto making the way back to reconciliations as just paying a debt. That was the way he provided to purchase us back. He did it all just to reconnect with us. Salvation of men is reconnecting to the holy God and becoming his seedling duplicate first fruits of God. Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he, did, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. James 1, 18. Of his own will, he begat us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That's us, folks. We need to let him finish the good work in us and fully redeem us, purchasing us back from the enemy kingdom representative and bondage holder. We are saved by him, not just the legal debt of sin being paid, but by him being in our lives, leading us out of marriage bondage to Satan and bringing us into life himself, the vine branch sprouting first fruit of the father to which we will be the next of his brethren birthed out. He is salvation, and we receive rescue or safety in him. And folks, I know this is long. It's been an hour already, um, but he really, really came over me in this Isaiah 11 and wanted to talk about what was finished, what was my mission, and what is salvation? I mean, really, what was my walk? What did I exemplify? And, uh, and I see it flawlessly tied in as it was talking about the, you know, the branch sprouting of the root which is the father, the root of Jesse, the son coming through, the lineage. But it's all in reflection to which tree are we going to live out of, folks? Because it has a root system and it feeds us. And that tree is a kingdom. Eventually, the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is going to be chucked into the fire. And anything that still remains in that tree connected to its root systems being fed from that and upholding the enemy kingdom will be chucked into the discard pile as well. And folks, it's, it's entirely our choice. We were supposed to have learned all these things a long time ago. I'm, I'm learning them right now with God too. So <laughs> don't think that I have known all this stuff all along. I, I only started getting right with him about less than a decade ago. I mean, right as in coming out of religion, coming into, wait a minute, you've had the truth your whole life. Have you lived it? Let's find out, Janet. And, uh, and it's, so this walk with him has been incredible of the things that he's revealing to me. But I'm finding that we have been on milk for way too long and we've been being pummeled in this earth, in this world uh, by Satan and the kingdom here that's upheld by the, the, the power of the prince of the airwaves here, the culture here, the ways here. We've been pummeled because uh, everybody led us into religion. He didn't come to erect an, a religion. He came to, to make the way for recon, recon, reconciliations to a relationship. He came to uphold a kingdom in our lives, not a religion, not a doctrine, uh, not some textbook words that we just read and I have knowledge of that never we let get into us and reform us, that never we yoke to and make become part of us. 
that's the relationship folks and he is very emotional over me right now he is wanting us to blow the spirit of religion out of the water right now and 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 and, and adopt within us the spirit of reconciliation because that's the opposite of the spirit of religion the spirit of religion is like you can know some stuff, stuff like satan he he knows a lot of scripture but he never walked in it folks walking in it is walking relationally with god making him your most high one in your life that is what this is all about. Salvation is doing that. Salvation is walking life out with God. He, he, he paid the debt. His blood was poured out. That's, the, that's like the money currency he handed over. He, per, he purchased anybody who wants to be back in reconciliations with him. But that's a choice. He's not going to force anybody to come into reconciliations with him. And that's what we need to understand about salvation. It's, it's not just uh, Christ did it all. Uh -uh. Christ paved the way to it all. Christ lived it all perfectly. Christ did that. But unless we find ourselves in relationship with him, being yoked to him, we do not end up where he ended up. We have to come through his perfect purchase. His, per his person has to be married to. And when he says married to, he means I need you to re-yoke to me, want to be in relationship with me, want to allow me to let me reform your life, lead you in all your ways and uh, and change the tree that, you, that you've that you been upholding, the kingdom you've been upholding, change your mind and change your heart quite literally by the connections, the synapses, the thought processes and put you into my tree, which has the brain thinking, the mind thinking uh, of me and my ways um, and the heart of God. It's completely coming out of uh, the heart of Satan, the center of Satan, his counsel, his mind, his leadings, et cetera, and so on. And it's coming into my tree, which is a completely different process. It's a completely new creation. In fact, I'm going to finish a work in you guys that I started in the garden, but you have to say yes to me finishing that work. And when you do, I'll pull you into my tree. And in that tree, I'll uphold my kingdom. I will uphold my kingdom within you. That is what salvation is. Salvation is him. He is salvation. Yoking to him, um, being in love with him and, and grateful to him and saying yes to walking life out forevermore with him. Um, eventually, yeah, he'll take you to heaven. You'll see some wonderful things. And you'll have a great life in, in the new earth and everything. Okay. That is like the smallest portion of what it's about. That's his goods, what he's got, right? Who he is, is the gift. The fact that he's never going to leave you. He's going to help you in all your ways. He's going to uphold his own kingdom inside of you because you want to uphold him inside. Marriage is upholding him inside. Like you are, you are special. You, I've never met anybody like you. I can't believe you are the living God and you want to yoke with me. I can't believe you came here and did all this, uh, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> I read it. I read it and it's true. And you made the way. And all I have to do is say yes. All I have to do is say yes and marry you. And then like, put effort into our marriage like anybody should and he's like yes <laughs> that's it allow me to clean you up allow me to get all the dupe and the gunk and the mire off of you satan in his ways let me um break off his grips that he's got on you guys left right and center uh dust you off shake you off and uh and bring you home that's now inside and later so, folks, uh, he just really wanted to nail that away. And again, like I said, this is really long. So, Father, if you have anything else that he just said, usually he's real quick with knowing a thumbs up, but he just like put his hand over his heart like, thank you for this. So I leave you all with this. I leave you all with an incredible, cre incredible, beautiful message of of what the son accomplished in his mission, which was his life here, the lot that the father gave him to walk out. And we each have one. And thank God is not the walk the son had to do uh, in living it all perfectly. Oh, thank God for you, Messiah, uh, in joining to you in that. And that all we have to do is really put an effort in with you, be accountable to you, allow you to lead us and uh, reform us and uh, bury ourselves in you um, scripturally because you're swimming all through these pages. And the revelation of you is revealed if we'll spend time with you. And that's also in, in communion with you and praying and hearing your spoken word over us, not just the logos written, um, but if we'll do that and we'll walk with you in spirit and in truth and in mercy, our whole lives can be upheld by the kingdom of heaven and the demonic works, agendas and 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 things that he's throwing our way from his kingdom will be shut down. His bark will be zipped. He will not have any place he can uphold his kingdom in us anymore, God. And you will be saving your children's souls left and right, left and right, daily and hourly. And then for the rest of eternity, we 
get to live with you and never be alone. Never be subject to that fool again in his ways. It's, you are the most incredible, beautiful person I've ever met. And I just want to thoroughly thank you on behalf of all of humanity for doing what you did. Yes, but you couldn't have done it without being who you are. And you have given yourselves to us in marriage. And I just want to thank you for that. So, Father, in the name of your holy and precious son, my bridegroom, I thank you today for all that you have given to us in every way, including the son who shows who has shown us the way and continues through the Holy Spirit of God to show us the way every day, how to be set free and delivered from more and more and more. I love you very much. Amen, sir.